Welcome back everybody here at Blue Glow Electronics. Today we're going to be uh, testing out a Harman Kardon 330C here on the bench. A very nice receiver. A uh, nice gentleman had had it in my queue for a little over a year and finally got around to, uh, to getting this thing on the bench and uh, we're finding some interesting observations. So one, um, you know, as I went to take the cover off of this thing and I always put the little um, screws in one of these little magnetic trays so you don't lose them but I noticed that the uh, the screws had uh, it's kind of hard to see here but you could tell that they had been taken off before um, so as a clean you know one of the first things I always do when, when working on an amp is I inspect the screws they give you some indication as to has someone been inside of the thing or not before and um, as we get the cover off of this thing and we kind of come around and take a look at this thing. Um, my first impressions were, wow, this thing's really nice and clean on the inside. And, um, you know, early observation was, wow, this thing uh, looks like it's got all the original caps in it. And I only thought that because they're all the same color. And typically when a unit comes from the factory, all the capacitors will be of the same brand, same type, um, same color. But as I got to looking a little closer, these all are Nikicon um, KT capacitors, audio grade capacitors throughout this thing. And so from one end to the other on this thing, um, as you can see, even over here on the little uh, preamp board, as well as the, uh, you know, all the stages, um, even down here, and uh, you can see. This thing has been completely recapped from one end to the other. And these capacitors have not been out uh, maybe 10, 12, 15 years at the most. So and it's, been, it's something been done recently in the last few years. And I noticed that the uh, two big power supply capacitors had been replaced. So the individual that sent this to me, uh, i can play you a little video here and you'll see what I'm talking about. As you can see, they uh, you know, believe there's something wrong inside this amplifier. And um, I'll be honest with you, I've had it on the bench now for about five hours, and I have been testing the heck out of it, and I have yet to find an issue. Um, also noted down inside here, um, this whole thing is, uh, has been uh, relamped with uh, green LEDs. So when you actually power this thing on here, oops on the face of this thing you can see it looks uh, looks pretty darn good here <laughs> about as good as any Harman Kardon I've ever seen um, so the fact I can't find anything wrong with it in five hours um, I thought we would just do a good uh, bench uh, test on this thing and uh, see what kind of specs it's putting out at least I can prove to the customer that uh, that this thing's got good quality specs coming out of it First thing I do in my bench test is I've got these little banana plug connectors here and if you notice they come over here and they go into some jumpers that then feed up into the uh, to my dummy load and whatnot and the reason for these jumpers here is uh, the ends of these wires are kind of tinned and fit into these type connectors or I could swap out those with just uh, regular banana to banana for plugging into the back of an amplifier that actually has uh, banana jacks on the back of it. And then we fed in here into the aux port on this thing with just a set of uh, RCA cables. And the other end of that RCA cable feeds up here right now into the 8903 audio analyzer. So um, we'll be turning it on. Okay, as you can see here, I'm uh, feeding this thing um, on the input with a about a 0.2 volt um, input and I'm just playing around with the volume knob here. This thing will drive pretty hard. It'll go all the way up to right at 36 volts and then you can see the little bit of clipping that starts to take place there at the top. Um, but you know at 36 volts that's a that's right at 40 watts out. Um, so we'll leave this thing down here at about 20 volts. 
um, which if you take half of that, uh, so peak instead of peak to peak, so that would be 10 volts, 10 times 10 is 100, uh, 100 divided by the 8 ohm output is about 12 and a half watts out this thing is putting right now. And if I flip to the right channel, if you'll notice, uh, rock solid stays on exactly the same uh, same voltage level, which means the uh, outputs are good and balanced, as well as, um, let's flip over here and hit some distortion level. If you'll notice, I'm going to swing over here, and on the right hand side here, we are seeing now 0.16% distortion at 12 and a half watts out. If I crank this thing on up, let's just get it up here to about 30. And then if you'll notice, we're still at this 0.18. And if I flip to the left channel, um, we're still 0 0.19, 0 0.2, bounce around just a little bit there. Um, but very, very, very low distortion on this thing at, uh, on the output there. So let's do a little bit more with it. Okay, we've been running a series of sweeps here, uh, frequency response on this thing, and you see a little bit of a dip here and a little bit of a rise here, and that's mainly due to the, uh, the treble and, and ba uh, bass uh, adjustments on this thing. Even though you turn them to the center or kind of off, it's hard to get those completely out of the circuit. But I would say, you know, overall from 0 to 20 kilohertz at the most on either one of these, and I shifted one of them just a little bit here. Um, just to be able to see the separation there. But you're no further than up or minus 1 dB uh, across the entire frequency plot. So this thing's uh, holding its own in a really good uh, frequency response. Okay, as you can see here, we've ran both channels plotting THD versus uh, plus noise versus frequency. And one channel starts out at 0.1% um, distortion, goes down to practically zero, and comes back up to 0.1% distortion here at 20k. The other one starts out at about a half percent distortion, drops off quickly down here, gets into the 0.2 percent range at 100 hertz and stays low all the way across there. Uh, not not uncommon to see and that's a, uh, both those are really good readings. Okay and the final test we're performing here, uh, this is an HP 3582 spectrum analyzer. As you can see here, as I crank the volume up on this thing, at some point here, the marker will go off scale. And if I keep cranking, I finally start getting some harmonics. But at that point, I'm driving this thing all the way into saturation. If I, if I bring it back down to a normal spot, there are really no harmonics whatever to speak of here on this thing, left or right channel. So, um, pretty solid amp. Okay, my final little test here I like to do, I like to feed a square wave into an amplifier and it'll tell you a lot um, feeding a square wave in. First thing you're looking for here is on the um, kind of the upswing here of the signal. You're wanting to see how steep this is. In other words, this thing's pretty much straight up and down. It's not sloped like this. Second thing you want to look for here on the tip is that there's no ringing, so you don't see a lot of overshoot and then correction and then back. The third thing you want to look for is how flat is this top portion because the flatter it is, the better this amplifier is performing across the entire frequency spectrum. Keep in mind this, this square wave is made up of all frequencies, low and high. And so the flatter this line is, in other words, if it had some slope to it like this, which it has a slight bit, and what that kind of tells you is it's, uh, as you get into the higher frequencies, it has a little less uh, gain to it than on the, uh, the lower frequencies here. But it's not bad at all. I've seen them that look uh, really, really slope. And especially I've seen these lines, um, you know, the transients up and down uh, with significant slope to them tells you that your amplifier is not responding. Um, and both channels, if you notice here, are solid as a rock. That's as good of a square wave as I have ever seen on an amplifier, um, to be honest. You can spread it out a little bit and you can start to see here just the teeniest little bits of, uh, let me turn my, uh, my display here off. 
Um, maybe. Uh, anyway, you can you can see here um, with it turned off, you can see just the slightest little bit of overtake, but there's really no ringing there or anything um, to speak of. So beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, way to measure the overall effectiveness of an amplifier by feeding it with a square wave. There you go. You can see it. I was hitting the wrong button a minute ago to try to get rid of that. Um, but you can see just beautiful little square wave there. You can also see a beautiful uh, sine wave here, uh, trapezoid, uh, nice and sharp as could be, the uh, square wave as we mentioned, a little notch here, and a little notch on the bottom. This thing is, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, it's, it's as solid of an amplifier as I've seen yet. Okay, I'm going to leave about this thing running at somewhere around 30 watts of output. Um, non-stop. Um, so far I've had it running about six hours now and I'm gonna leave it running in the rest of the day and maybe into tomorrow. I've shot the uh, owner an email asking if there's anything external to this amplifier that may have been causing their issue. Uh, maybe maybe the audio cables, maybe the preamp, maybe the audio source, anything else that could be causing it because I'm really not seeing anything and uh, I'm not one to pretend there's something wrong when there's not and try to fix something that's not broken. I'd rather own up and say, hey, you sent me a perfectly good working amplifier and by the way, it's been professionally restored and, um, and you know, we did a good bench check on it for you, but uh, I think this thing's going to be good to go. Time will tell. If so, I'll end up uh, making a separate video maybe on what's wrong with it and how to repair it, but uh, all indicators at this point, this thing is rock solid. Thanks for watching, everybody.